Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Nice to see you again. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we ask that you forgive us from our sins. Be merciful to us, Lord. Please send the Holy Spirit to be with us in this short time. Please guide me and lead me, especially as what you have to say to your children, because I don't know what they need. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, now Jason asked me to teach about technology. But technology is not very important. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I think technology is not very important. It's just a tool. Anyway, how to use technology properly. Yeah, how to use technology properly. Otherwise, technology will use us. Diba? Will make us slaves. Anyway, Mom said uh, how technology how to use technology properly. Okay, let's start. So I'm just going to uh, get some some uh, ideas from these other slides. So I told you last night that usually we, what brought us near to Jesus is what we want to use also to bring others to Jesus. That's why, and there are opportunities if you look, if you want to help, there are so, if you observe, there are many needs in the church and there are many gifts and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to the church. And while the church is there, until the end of time, all of these things are useful, including the things that you are studying and the things you're interested to do. Helping others. So our attitudes that we can do, and I observe that people who depend totally on God are more productive in winning souls. Those who are humble, Baptize more people than those who are proud. And the people who know how to pray are also, uh, so I have many experiences and so on. So uh, this thing is based on Habakkuk 2.2. You know why I made it, tried to make it clear? Because the Bible says the projector has to be clear. In Habakkuk 2.2 it says here, it should be the vision, you know this vision? It is the projector. <laughs> or the video. It has to be clear and plain <clears throat> that he who reads or oh, he may run that reader. So the one who reads it will be in a hurry, will understand. Romans 10. What is more important, the audio or the video? Oh, they are already know already. Okay, I didn't skip. <laughs> because it says the faith cometh by hearing. So God gives vision sometimes. But it cometh by hearing. That's why we have to make the sound clear. Oh, diba? That is a challenge. Okay. So, music. Okay, many of you like music. But music is very useful in, uh, no, in, uh, in ministry. It is soul-saving. Moses used music to help the Israelites memorize. It quickens the thought. That's why those musicians, they are more intelligent. Yeah? Than if they were not musicians. <laughs> diba? Be okay. <laughs> but there is nice music and uh, music also from somewhere else. Promote harmony, banish gloom, etc. So uh, those things are continual sermon. These are the summary of the book Evangelism in the title Song Evangelism. And it is a weapon, etc. But there is a what kind of music? Ah, the other is enemy also uses. Uh, music in different ways, not according to God's will. It says here in Evangelism 5.1.2, music is acceptable to God only when the heart is sanctified and made soft and holy by its facilities. Uh, so there is music that makes you more rebellious. I used to play that music before. <laughs> Strong. It makes the screen go like this. But someday, I will tell you my testimony. One, one time, I had big speaker. And I borrowed the big speaker of my friend. And we did evangelism. And I played, I don't care what kind of music. I play any music, mom, before. But the pastors were concerned. I think they were praying for me. Because they saw Sir Pasamba. They are playing all kinds of music in evangelism. As long as there is God or something, I play. So I think the pastors, they were praying for me. And then one of the pastors came to my office. Said, Sir, have you watched Ivor, Pastor Ivor Myers? I said, no, I'm busy. Next day he came, can you watch Pastor Ivor Myers? For one week, that pastor came to my office every day, asking me, have you watched Ivor Myers? So I said, let me download that guy. I download his GYC presentations. I watch him. 
of course I watch past one times 1.5 so I will not be bored and you know if you watch fast you can you can you know you will not sleep because the the big the audio is fast and then God used Pastor Ivor Myers because he is uh, Jamaican he has cultural credibility he is pastor he has theological credibility and he is a musician who has used who may used to make eight hundred thousand dollars a year so he has uh, musical credibility not just like us who are just, you know who are just wanna be so when I watched that presentation I prayed to God Lord uh, my influence is too strong because I have big 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 sound system when I turn on whole barangay until the end of the road hears it I want to do I don't want to be bad influence what if what I'm playing is wrong I surrendered my music to God and then <laughs> God showed me what is the correct music. You know what is the correct music? There are only two people who saw heavenly music. Guess who? And the Revelator and Ellen White. Diba? So what did Ellen White see? In her visions. By the way, instrumental music do not call for the song of angels. A gorgeous apparel, the nice clothes, the talent in singing, <laughs> they are not, I don't know what that means. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will just say, do not call forth the song of the angelic choirs. So, it can be unfruitful or pretentious lips. Because sometimes the choir, they don't even hear. They don't listen to sermon. <laughs> they just sing and then they do in their cell phone again. Yeah? So, pretentious lips. Okay. So, that is, uh, music is only sanctified or me acceptable when it sanctifies us. Some people sing, they don't know how to make melody in their heart. They are just singing because the song is nice. Oh, Evangelism page 512. So we should not depend on instrumental music. Program can go on even without music. But, oh, this is the danger, my friends. Clearing away the rubbish. Oh, there is rubbish. According to Ellen White, in such and such a church, the music has to be clean. Some, what is the rubbish? So I look, what rubbish? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. You will be angry. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about what is good. So what is not included in what is good? Uh, you know, it is from somewhere else, yeah? So heavenly music, Ellen White, when he ha she has burden, spiritual burden, because God shows Ellen White so many things. And sometimes she is stressed. I will have to write a letter to this guy. I don't know him. But God told me he is committing adultery. So Ellen White is stressed. And then when she is stressed, sometimes she sleeps. She hears the music from heaven. Choir. And then she asks, did you hear the choir last night? Of course, nobody else heard the choir. Only she. Because she is the only one who needs that. <laughs> so what kind of music God showed Ellen White? That's the music also she wants to teach to the church. Do you think that is uh, crazy music? No, that's why Ellen White and James White collected music that looked like the heavenly music that she saw in the visions and dreams. And they made a hymnal. And they chose the hymns that sounded like heaven which she heard in the vision. So these are some of the favorites. We, in Ayas, ma'am, presentation, Dr. James Nix, the former director of EGYT State. This was his research. That was his name. He researched all the favorite songs of Ellen White. Because positive example, yeah? If you want to remove bad music, replace it with something nice. So we played that. You just find a good pianist and uh, look for the piece. And then you sing. Ellen White said, uh, I heard heavenly music. Please don't sing like that. Don't sing like funeral. You know, like old people when they are singing. Oh, don't sing like funeral. You should be lively and we should understand the word. Oh, Jesus, I have promised clear, dic, uh, dic, uh, what do you call this? clear pronunciation and pr singing from the heart. So she said, let's try again. And then it was better, yeah? Because you have to sing like the Africans. From the heart, yeah? 
<laughs> there is a then uh, no a uh, continent of preachers or oh, they say so so this is an example positive example of what music is like heaven songs of zion this is the publisher of the book okay so you know in evangelism there are many ways to do it original there will be original devices which used to communicate like to those who are near and those who are far okay that's the live streaming i think yeah but we don't have to finish all our money expensive things and so on okay you know how many years we live stream in pic before we got uh, many viewers god gave us many viewers now we have more viewers than hope we used to like to be in hope channel but now when we click live in pic the hope channel viewers go low and they transfer to us so you know how many years 10 years we have only five viewers because it says do not be discouraged with small returns. Just continue your ministry, even if it takes decades to build up an audience. So, steady effort for good results. And of, of course, right methods. And yeah. attitude, let us not be proud. Let us be humble because we don't know what to do and we don't know what the enemy is doing. So, um, this is the slide that I want to show you. This is because, yeah, you know, I don't need to tell you about technology. Your phone is better than my phone. Your computer is better than my computer, right? So, but this is the thing we don't know. It says here, many have turned away from God's plan to follow human inventions to the detriment of spiritual life. Amusements are doing more to counteract the working of the Holy Spirit than anything else. That means it's number one in contradicting the work of the Holy Spirit. What amusement? Ah. Oh. So what kind of amusement can we do? The amusement that the Bible approves. What is the, I know, the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. Okay, so games that kill? Ah, uh, no. Thou shalt not steal. So there are amusements that steal. If I'm wrong, uh, games that you are stealing something, you are killing people, you are killing whatever. What you cannot do in real life, don't do even in the game. Yeah? Because what you see, goes to your mind. Everything that you see goes to your mind, except the answers in your exam. <laughs> After the exam, no, you know what? In psychology, it says everything that comes into your senses is there in your mind. It's there. So be careful in Philippians 4 8. Think of these things. Things that are pure, lovely, holy, etc. Good report. You think about those things. But things that are bad, don't, uh, just uh, no, don't look at it. You close your eyes when you scroll. Yeah, because not like the exam questions, they are in your mind, but you cannot retrieve. But after the exam, then you know it already. <laughs> that means it's there. So let whatever we look, I have made a covenant in, with my eyes. Why then should I think upon a lawyer? That is Job, because he is a man. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that are set. So, Set no wicked thing before your eyes. So amusement are doing more to counteract the working of the Holy Spirit than anything else, and the Lord is good. So uh, these are not very important. That one you can Google. <laughs> okay, we have uh, many years. Okay, but I want to go to the last slide because it says here, my friends. You know this guy, Bible flock box. He's very popular on YouTube. Everywhere I do a media seminar, some people say, Sir, we came to the church because we watched this guy. He used to be an addict. Now he is editing videos and putting all the truth there. And God has called him to that ministry. Okay. How things happen? God tells us the truth. It is nice that we want to share it. God impresses us to pray for something to do. Because I didn't know what you were supposed to do, but you know what? Whenever I ask God what to do, it used to be I ask God, Lord, please do this, please do this. But, Mom, I realized I'm not God. But why am I telling God what to do? God knows what to do. I'm supposed to ask Him what to do. So I, I changed my prayer. Lord, what will I do? I don't know what to do. I don't know the future. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And life is simpler. <laughs> I don't have to even plan. I don't have to think. I just ask God. The problem is, I'm not listening sometimes. <laughs> Success depends on how much we follow God. Okay, God gives us talents, experiences. Okay, 
Now I want to jump to the other slide because I found something very nice here. This one. Okay, using technology, Habakkuk 2 we finished that one. Propagating the good news, we can use the computer. Yan. You know why I, I wish there are so many Bible verses? Because the Bible says, this verse, the Bible, we shall teach them to your students while you are sitting, while you are walking, driving, while the light is down, and when the rise is up. That's why I always is full of Bible verse. <laughs> you understand? I have Bible basis, even if you don't like. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that is why any day the Bible repeats. The more the Bible repeats it, the more it's important. In Deuteronomy 11, it says, while you are sitting, while you are walking, while you are lying down, while you are rising. Because so that we will not forget what God says. Teach them to your students, your sons, and your sons' sons. So that you will not forget that who God is. Okay. You can continue, continue. So we use different kinds of technology to uh, spread the truth. Of course, this is what we are spreading. So, uh, okay. Oh, this is yeah, my favorite verse for all of you students. Do you want to be better than your teacher? You remember this one. You know why there are so many Bible verses in Iolis? Because I want you to be better than your teacher. See, I have more understanding than all my teachers. Teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. Oh, diba? If you read the Bible and the SOP more than your teacher, you will become better than your teacher. If your teacher is reading also, then I think you will be better still. <laughs> it's better because your teacher and you... Okay. It is a safeguard. And the best for intellectual development is the study of God's Word. Wow! Well, before I tried many things to be intelligent, because my classmates are intelligent. Like me, I'm slow. So, but I found out studying God's Word, it's the best for intellectual training. You said this, that's Education 142. So how do you learn the Bible without reading the Bible? Just listen to sermon. Okay. But you, you attend worship, you don't have to read. You just listen, open your eyes. Learn how to give Bible study. Do you know, when you listen, you only retain uh, 5%. When you're the one giving Bible study, they say you retain 95%. So you listen and you give, then you retain 100%, right? And then you forget. Memorize Bible verses, listen to biblical pictures. Okay, so many things. I found something that is here. Everybody should be, should have something to do. Oh, it is here. Church members that are labor, if the pastor is working for you, it's not good for you. It says here, church members that are thus looked after and labored for become religious, we cling. So don't let the pastor help you. You help the pastor. Oh, the one who helps is the one who is strong. If the pastor is helping you, ah, there is, you are weak. <laughs> anyway, if you are weak, then you try to become strong and be of use the church. Because if you are just always uh, waiting for the pastor, it means something. That means we are not becoming strong. Okay? It says here, it weakens those who know the truth for our ministers to expend on them the time and talent that should be given to the unconverted. Ah, the more Pastor Kenneth comes to me to help me, the more weaker I am. Naku, that he, so he should be there evangelizing and I should be walking on my own, yeah? So as long as the, so long as the church members make no effort to give to others, oh, how do you be strong? By helping others. Don't worry about yourself. Sometimes you are thinking, you know, those, uh, according to a doctor, those who are depressed, five times they are talking about themselves. Five times more. I, I, do you know why, how Lucifer fell? I want to be, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be. So, let us uh, watch what, our, what we are thinking. So, it says here, when we give effort to help others, then 
we are we become strong or like that. When we make no effort to help others, we become feeble. But when we help others, we become strong. Oh, that's why I like to help others, even if I myself don't know what to do. You know what? Because if you fail, it's okay. It's not me. It's just them. But if you are helping yourself and then you fail, now you are really sad. Yeah? That's why, it's, anyway, it's better to help others, and that's the result. Okay. This is very nice. Our ministers are not to spend time laboring for those who have accepted the truth. Okay. Should help. And why? It is says in Joel 2.28. All of you will become prophets. Do you know? Joel 2.28. In the last days, your sons and daughters shall prophesy and dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And upon your servants and upon your handmaids, I will pour out my spirit. Okay. And also in Acts 2.21, it says the same thing. They are quoting Joel. And in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, Love is good, charity is good, but prophesying is the best. Okay, diba? It says in the last verse of 1 Corinthians 14, Covet to prophesy. You know what the Bible says? Thou shalt not covet. But the Bible also says there is only one thing that we can covet. Prophesying. So if you see somebody preaching, I like to be like that preacher. That is biblical. You just copy how they are doing. The Bible says, go back to prophesy. First Corinthians 14, I think 38 or 39. And of course, that is the amusement. So this is the summary. Uh, now the question, my friend, is how to receive the Holy Spirit? Yeah. So there are, I just want to summarize this. These are the there are in the Bible, there are things that you can do to help receive the Holy Spirit. There are things that you can do also to drive away the Holy Spirit. And I will just be very fast. fast. Repentance. Why? Because first, Acts 2.38 says, Repent and receive the Holy Spirit. That's why you know when I pray, I found out, I copied other people. He said, you repent first before you ask. That's why I just, and I observed that it's very, very nice. When I repent first, and I ask forgiveness of sin, and then I ask things, I think God is listening more after we repent. Otherwise, the Bible says, those who are not listening, who are not obeying, their prayers are an abomination. So I repent first, then you ask. Yeah, It says, Acts 2, 38, you repent, and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. And implicit trust, of course, we have no hope, but only Jesus Christ. Obedience, when we don't obey, Oh, we are liar. First John, he then says, I know him, and keep it not his commandment, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. One pastor asked me, Win, how is your relationship with Jesus? I said, I don't know. <laughs> what is relationship? What is definition of relationship? You girls, you know what is relationship. You ask boys, we are lost. <laughs> so I prayed to God, how do I define the relationship from the Bible? And then God remind me, reminded me in 1st John 2, 4. If you know, if no is a relationship, yeah? If you, want, if you want to know, if you know God, how do you measure? Ah, are you cooking on Sabbath? <laughs> are you obeying health laws? So, if you are not obeying God's most recent instructions, ah, I am a liar. Okay, I am a liar. Do you know most recent instruction? Okay, so that is how you measure objectively a uh, relationship with God. Of course, when you want to share, God will help you to share. If you don't want to ask, share to other people, what is uh, the Holy Spirit will not come. Because that's how the Holy Spirit came in the time of Pentecost. Because they want to go into all the world. When you ask for the Holy Spirit, God will give you because... You are asking. Ask and ye shall receive. You see? How much more him who is asking for the Holy Spirit? Yeah? If ye be in evil, know how to good gift to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them 
that asking. So I ask for the Holy Spirit, you pray without ceasing, and God will help, that helps uh, receive the Holy Spirit. Honoring God, the body temple, of course, if you are drinking liquor and bad things, then it's a different spirit <laughs> that comes. Yeah? What else? Those are the Bible verses. And if you want Jesus Christ to stay in your heart, okay. How about driving the Holy Spirit away? Very easy. Just reverse all of those things and it, uh, the Holy Spirit will not come. Unbelief, blasphemy, secondary, oh, secondary concerns, pride and reliance, we already, retaliatory, re intense amusement, we already know what is the secondary concerns. You know, there we have primary concerns and we have secondary concerns. Yeah? So primary concerns are those things that are written in the Bible. Secondary concerns are things that are not written in the Bible. Those uh, the things in your class. <laughs> they are temporarily now only. So that's all, my friends. Uh, all of these things, uh, to summarize, God has assignment for everyone. We have in, he has given spiritual gifts to everyone. He has given us cell phones and other things, technology, and he has given us skills, talents, energy, have energy, and uh, brain power, and he wants to Holy, send the Holy Spirit to us so that we may, you know what happens to people who receive the Holy Spirit? They become bold and preach the word, like how, how what happened in Acts. Okay, so that's all. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for all the things in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. We thank also for using technology to help us in efficiency. We only ask that you help us to be faithful, Lord, and uh, keep us from falling into the temptations of amusements that are unbiblical. Forgive us from all our foolishness that we have did before because we did not know what to do. Give us wisdom and understanding to do your work, I pray specifically for these students of ours who are training to be missionaries. Uh, protect them from evils, temptations. Give them wisdom and understanding and love for your word and your work so that they will be happy and joyful in doing your work, in doing your will, knowing that you are, they are doing what your will is. Thank you. Bless them with uh, success and also don't make them successful in doing bad things, only good things, so that they will not be lost. Thank you for hearing our prayers in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Let's go to the song. Shall we all stand and sing? Take my life and let me give.